Oh, greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, Yahushua Messiah. Uh, my name is Ivan and it is the 7th of October 2023. Just after 4 o'clock on the Saturday afternoon here in sunny South Africa. A beautiful hot spring day. Today we're going to have a look at um, the story of the, the flood. Uh, Genesis chapters 7 and 8 where it gives us the details of the duration of the flood. This is a, a subject that I got into some time ago and uh, I've had a look around at some of the other teachings on, on the subject and I must just say to you that I, I it's great difficulty um, agreeing with with the mainstream teaching on the uh, on the Noah flood story in particular in particular the, the duration of the actual time that Noah and his family spent on the ark. But I put it aside and uh, I, I did do a bit of a chart at the time. It was probably about two years ago, I don't know, maybe a year and a half ago. And uh, I did share it with a couple of people and I shared it on the forum at Ministry Revealed. And uh, I've set it aside with the idea of maybe one day getting into a little bit more detail on that. And recently it came up again. Uh, in the forum and so I've decided to 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 get it done um, go through this uh, the the events that are described in Genesis 7 and 8 and explain why I disagree with the mainstream uh, understanding of the story and why I believe that um, what I believe to be, what, and I just want to go through in, in, in some detail as to what I believe to be the correct understanding of the Noah story. So why do we do these things? Um, you know, does it really matter at the end of the day? Uh, well, I believe it does. Um, I believe that uh, it's truth begetting truth, um, and we should be seeking the truth in in everything as far as we and and. To, to, I think it's important to get a, a an excellent understanding of the word and the events that happened. I believe that if we understand more clearly what happened, uh, what was, uh, then we will understand more clearly what what is what is to come, because what is to come is is going to be based on what was. And so for that reason, I believe it is important to get into some of the detail and to understand these things more correctly. I think uh, to start off with, we should have a look at what the mainstream uh, teaching is. Uh, the general understanding by most in the in the church is, uh, is and um, and then we'll get into what I believe it should be. I'm going to try and keep this video to about an hour, and uh, or even less if 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 I can, and. Uh, I'm going to try and do it in a way that hopefully will keep your attention and that uh, that people will remain you know intrigued by the word as we uh, as we unfold it and as we unfold the truths uh, before us. All right, so I think these well if you go and do a search on the internet you'll find there are many many teachings um, on the Noah flood story. Uh, a good teaching to have a look at is um, in this particular site how long was the flood? These guys have done a tremendous amount of work on, on the subject um, and they cover all sorts of uh, um, uh, points uh, which include the, uh, the conversion of what um, the Bible refers to as a cubit to today's uh, dimensions. That they're going to a fair amount of detail on that, um, which is uh, quite interesting to look at. Um, uh, they've got a timeline, of course, which I'm going to have a look at, and it's in line with the standard un interpretation. I'm just, I'll, I will touch on that. Um, they look at uh, some of the other, some other cr chronologies, um, but I really just want to focus on their side on two things, because it is in line with the general understanding. Um, if we go to their timeline, uh, the general understanding by most is that the time that Noah and his family spent on the ark was about 370 days. Some say 371 if you count uh, the first day or the last day and then of course some say 377 because they add the seven they believe that Noah entered the ark uh, on the day that the Lord warned him he said for yet seven days the flood is coming and they got on the ark immediately so they include those seven days 
and then of course if you add the last day as well then it's 378 so by far the greatest majority of teaching or the greatest the, 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 the most common understanding is that the the, dura the time that Noah spent on the ark was 370 around about 370 days uh, this of course is all based on the understanding that in Noah's time uh, Noah had a calendar which was based on a 360 day um, a year there's no uh, evidence of such a, a, a calendar uh, at all in fact it actually uh, 360 days contradicts the movements of the sun the sun and the moon against the stars there is no 360 day you can't find it anywhere in in such movement and we are told in genesis 1 14 that the sun moon and stars uh, determine our days years and seasons and times uh, times of uh, uh, appointed times etc so this concept of 360 day prophetic year is largely based uh, on an understanding where in the story and we will be going into some uh, into this into the into the genesis um, 7 and 8 we will come across this 150 days that the water prevailed upon the earth 150 days and uh, they, they, they it's, it's considered to be three months of 30 days um, and it's just a very convenient um, of a way of looking at it and so the timings kind of look right and so the, there's been this adopted idea that the 150 days is five months uh, of 30 days per month with uh, based on a 360 day calendar year uh, for Noah's time uh, when you when you take that view then of course you've got five months where the water uh, uh, was rising and um, and then five months when it was receding now there are clearly again there are some that don't consider these to be two separate 50-day accounts the one is in Genesis 724 and the other one is in Genesis 83 but they're I'm, I'm fairly certain it's clear that those are two separate 150 day periods okay um, and not necessarily five months okay so if they are we are just told that there's 150 days period um, we shouldn't be getting into preconceived ideas that that should be a fixed number of months in any way because when we start to do that that leads into all sorts of misunderstandings and preconceived ideas which we should avoid so we can say safely that there are two, there are two sets of 150 days where one way is described as the waters prevailed and the other one is described when the waters receded these guys as is typically understood consider the 40 days because we're told that, the, that the, there was the 40 days that the rain uh, was uh, rain on the earth 40 days 40 nights and uh, they consider the 40 days to be part of the first 150 days so they split the 150 days into a 40 day period uh, and the remainder remaining period of 110 days for the waters prevailing again that's a preconceived idea there is nothing in the scripture that tells us that we should be that the 40 days is part of the 150 days okay um, then there's a further if you go into the all the other uh, breakdowns they will then go uh, there's another 40 days mentioned and uh, we, uh, later in, in the story we've got a seven days the seven days are mentioned uh, for the t for the release of the second and third dove and then of course there's a calculation of number of days which varies greatly okay these guys have now covered two two texts they, the, the, they've gone into the Septuagint and the Masoretic uh, text and there are differences in the number of in some of the detail and the dates and all that type of thing so um, they're just comparing the two in red text uh, for the, the Masoretic text and and in, and in black for the for the Septuagint. So the Septuagint, in my view, um, and my understanding in many areas and, and studying the chronology, the Septuagint has been distorted in many areas where it comes to dates. So I I, I do not trust the Septuagint at all from when it comes to uh, understanding sequence of events or more more, more specifically uh, the duration of events and the chron uh, chronology the Septuagint has 
has, has caused the uh, changes in the chronology to suit their own understanding at the time when they did do the translation. So therefore, it is not as reliable as the uh, Masoretic text, um, and which was which is far more uh, s uh, stricter in adhering to to the original. Uh, so when copying over, they were very they were very strict in copying over the original the original text without uh, influencing the the text with their own preconceived un understanding. So it does appear to, it does. It is more reliable, I would suggest. So in this case, I would say that the 73, 74 days that they, that that is typically calculated would be the one to to look at, rather than the 93, and then of course the 23 or 29 days in some cases over there. Needless to say, this all of this added up. So when you take the the discount the seven day warning, and you take the 40 days or the 150 days and the 150 days. Um, and the remaining days to 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 the to the months that are given, they, they come to a, a total of 370, uh, 371 if you count the, the last day, etc. So, um, my purpose of this video is not in to go to explain um, how th how the in great detail how they come to these. There's um, there's another site that I had open. I'm just. I'm going to pause this thing and just open up another site that I thought was pretty good and well worth looking at. Okay, this was. There's. I've opened up another site here. Um, this was another site that I came across that also explained uh, quite well the that that 377, 378, and 371. The various options that are currently put forward by uh, by most. And they've got it in table form, and they give a full breakdown. There, the for the you know again, these guys are taking the the 40 to be part of the first 50, then the number of days between the um, 17th of the seventh month and the first of the tenth month, which are dates given to us in the script. And they just run it, got a running total plus the 40 days that is mentioned again in Genesis um, 8, 6, and 7, 6 to 7. And then, of course, there's the the, the the releasing of the first dove, the second dove, and then they count. They've actually added a, a, an extra seven days. Uh, I think they count another seven days after the 40 days. I think, uh, if I recall correctly. Anyway, somehow they come up with three sets of seven days, and then, of course, the remaining uh, 29 days, which will be the difference between two dates: the the first of the 12th month um, and the first of the sixth month, etc. Uh, and then again a difference between the first of uh, f uh, sorry the first of the twelfth month and the first of the first month which is given to us as a as a day when the when the I think it, this was the it says when the when the the, the cover of the ark was removed in any case it's a date that that, that that is referred to in the text and then the final date which is which we're given in the text is the twenty seventh day of the second month and then the difference between those two on a biblical it would be uh, on a biblical calendar would be 57 days so there they got the total and if the last day is counted 71 and then of course if if the first seven days are included then it's 377 or 378 if the last day is counted so they they give a nice breakdown of that understanding so if you if you want to go and have a look at that um to get an understanding of what the the typical teaching is um those would be two good sites to go and have a look at um, okay, so uh, that's just uh, I, I believe that 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 understanding is wrong. Uh, okay, these guys again, I don't think they're going to detail. They also base it on a, a Noah's calendar being 360 day calendar. Okay, so that's that seems to be the main reason for this understanding having come about. So what I did was I went through the text and I've and I've and I've gone through from first principles, and I've also applied what I believe to be the correct calendar. Okay, if you if you want to uh, understand um, the scriptures, you have to use the biblical calendar. Um, the Hebrew calendar is probably the closest widely accepted calendar in use, which is based on the, on on the sun and the moon positions in determining the calendar. They don't use the stars at all. They use the equinox uh, to determine the beginning of the year. Um, 
it's 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 fairly close. Um, and in 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 the biblical calendar, we have a situation where we've got two types of years. There's a, a short year and a long year. Okay, the short year, a 12 month year, but where some of the months only have 29 days in it versus 30 days for the alternate month, uh, results in a year being 354 days, which is the total duration for the cycle of the moon, for 12 cycles of the moon, 354. But the solar uh, year is 365, so what we've got this discrepancy, in fact, uh, 364 is probably the correct number to use, which is the total duration for the, a year based on the stars. So the sun's year is 365, but the star's year is 364. Uh, there's, a, there's a big difference between the two, and, and, and maybe one day I'll, I'll, I'll do a video on that and explain uh, why, is, why there's such a, a confusion between the 365 and, 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 and Enoch's mention of 364, which is the, a year based on the rot in, uh, rotation of the stars. Okay, um, So the cycle of the stars is 364 cycles in a year, Whereas in the same period of time, the sun does 365 cycles, or <laughs> well, 365 and a quarter, and the stars also do 364 and a quarter. But the moon does 12, 12 cycles in 354, so you've got this 10-day difference between the stars and 11 days between the sun to account for. And uh, so what, the, what would happen is in every second or third month, uh, there would be an, an, an additional month added, a 13th month. Uh, well, um, if you want to call it a, a long month, uh, f at, you know, uh, but essentially an additional 30 days would be added to the year to bring things in line so that the seasons don't drift out of line with uh, w with the sun and the moon against the stars. So you've got to do this intercalination -cal adjustment, uh, which results in a, a longer year. So instead of a 354-day year for uh, a long for a, for a short year, you add the 30 days, so you'll have a 384 day year occasionally. Okay. Um, now there are, there are some that would argue that that's unscriptural because no mention is ever made in the Bible of a 13th month. That's true. There is no mention of a 13th month. However, the Bible tells us that we must base our year on the sun, moon and stars and that uh, additional 30 month is governed by the stars. The reason why I believe that the 13th month is never named as the 13th month in the Bible is because I believe the last month of the year was always called a 12th month. Even so, that in other words, even the, even today, uh, the additional month is inserted between the 11th and the 12th month, and it's called, you know, 12A and 12B. So it's never called a 13th month in the Bible. Uh, for what reason, I, I don't know. But when it talks about the 12th month, what we don't know. Was that the 12th month in a short year or the 12th month in a long year? And that's the problem that we have. Nevertheless, there are at least two stories now that I know of that will prove to us that there is occasionally a long year. Th the one is this story of Noah's Ark, I believe, proves that there is a long year when you understand it correctly. And the second one is the story of Ezekiel in chapters 4, where he's told to, to lay on the one side for 390 days and the other side left side for 390 and the right side for 340 which is co and, and that all has to fit in within a year and a month and the only way you can fit that all in within a year and a month is if the, he's, the, there was a, an additional uh, month, additional 30 days there is no other way to fit it in so, so the dates, the, the, the start date given and the end date given the, are such that it cannot fit a standard 365 day year or a 354 day year in the case of a, of a biblical short year. It can only fit um, a 384 and it's sometimes a 383 years. Um, so 384, 383 year, in, let's call it a long year. So those, those are, the, there are two, these two stories can only work out from a biblical date perspective when you consider them to have occurred uh, across a year or started in a year where there was an additional month whatever you want to call that month okay um, and when you when you when we start working through this um, I, th I think you will see that the, the 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 logic will lead us to believe that this is this is the truth we are looking at a long year which is 354 plus the original 10 days so okay 
This chart that I put together is again, it's another little one of those eye tests. Um, so if you're on a small screen, I'm afraid you're going to have to try and get onto a big screen to appreciate it. I'm going to enlarge it as much as I can. I'll move around within the screen so that I can explain uh, what I'm trying to get at um, in the most logical way and without losing anybody. All right. So just a f first off, um, I'm just going to give a, an overall overall layout of of the um, of, of of the chart that I'm that I'm referring to. So I'm just going to zoom out. Don't expect you to be able to see anything in here. Okay, so I've got the the year um, laid out from month one down to the uh, to, to month uh, 13, if it's uh, the extra month, and then into the following year uh, with with dates. And I'm going to get into that detail. Then I've got the scriptures, <coughs> the references. Now I've just pulled out those scriptures. It'll just be easier for me to 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 refer to instead of jumping between the um, between two applications. I've got it all here, and then I've also got some of the um, Strong's definitions of some of the words that I want to highlight in these blocks over here. Um, so that's basically the layout. Layout. Um, I'm going to just zoom in again, and then let's have a look at what we've got here. Now we've got all right. So getting into the chart. Um, we we start off with the first date that that we're given in the text is the 17th day of the second month we, we're told that it is the um it was it's the the that the, the the flood started so in the 600th year of noah's life in the second month in the seventh day of the month the same day where all of the fountains of the deep uh, broken up and the windows of heaven were opened so that's the start that's the first day that's that's the day when the flood started okay so that's the first date that we're given and the last date that we're given is the 27th day of the second month in the following year okay um, that and that's done in so the first one was in the 600th year of Noah and this one is um, in the 601st year of, of Noah so in the second month in the, in the 7 and 20th day of the month was the earth dried and God spoke to Noah saying go forth of the ark thou and thy wife and thy sons and thy sons wives with thee so that's the end of the flood so those are the t that's the beginning and the end date that we're given um, in terms of, of of the flood the start and the end and then we've given um, some detail in between I just need to highlight there are specific durations me mentioned and there are only uh, these one two three four five six in the scriptures six specific durations okay it was 40 days 150 150 uh, this one was associated with prevailing 150 associated with receding another 40 and then the seven and the seven between the doves there are there is no other duration mentioned um, so they they've been underlined there's the 40 days in Genesis 717 then we've got um, the 150 days associated with the prevailing and then we've got another 150 days associated with the return. Uh, that's all the receding. Um, and then we've got um, 40 days. Yeah, that's in the story here. Sorry, I just pulled it out separately. Uh, 40 days uh, associated with opening of the window. And then we've got seven days um, related to the second dove and seven days related to the, the final dove. So those are the only durations mentioned okay and and we need to 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 consider them now uh, and they know those all need to fit in uh, between the two dates um, that we've got so the question is um, now how do we deal with these uh, these durations um, are any of them running uh, sequential are any of them running in parallel with as suggested in in where 40 days is running together with 150 or is it actually supposed to be considered as a sequential event where the 40 days was happened before the 150 uh, which happened before the next 150 which happened before the final 40 and so each of these days sequential if that is the case the total adds up to 394 exactly and 394 is exactly a full year for a long year and 10 days so 
we know that we have to have a year and 10 days of some sort because of the last date. It's given as the 27th day of the second month in the following year, uh, where the start was the 17th day of the second month. So there's a 10 day difference. So we're going from the 17th day of the second month in one year through to the 17th day of the second month in the following year, a complete year, plus 10 days. Now recently there's been a suggestion that this was uh, 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 um, based on uh, in, in the forum where it was considered uh, 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 the, um, the, the year was considered to be a, a short biblical year. In other words, the 354 where um, it would be 17th day of the second month to, se to the 17th day of the second month of the following year, 354 days later, plus the 10 days, which would be a total of 364 days, close to a solar year, which looks very attractive and a possibility. But the problem is, I cannot, you, you will not be able to get these numbers fitted in unless you start going, uh, unless the 40 is part of the 150. And even then, the, the total number of days does not add up to 365 because if that 40 is part of the 150 well then we can just take 40 off this and that's 354 days and we know that it must be well it includes the extra 10 days so it must be if if 364 days was the number we short 10 days okay so there's 10 days missing in the equation so it could not have been a short year a short year just doesn't work even if you take a short year and you and you consider the 40 days to be part of the 150 it doesn't work out it just uh, so the only way it works out is when we consider a long year a 384 day plus of course the 10 days so those 394 day and then the numbers pan out exactly and that's what I want to just go through and explain why it is that this is the most logical understanding of the text okay now, before we get into into the the detail of of each of these steps as we go along, we need to understand the way that the story is written in Genesis seven and eight is not necessarily a hundred percent sequential. In other words, it's not starting at the beginning and going to the, and 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 our story from beginning to end finished. No, it jumps around a bit. You know, we get a situation where um, Noah is told to get into the ark, and within within seven days the rain's going to start. That's the first bit. Okay, and Noah does according to the East commands, and then um, later on, so that's the first bit, and then it jumps, uh, and then it suddenly uh, it says, come, and then after, and it came to pass after the seven days, the, the waters uh, of the flood were upon the earth, um, and now that's, and then it starts again. The story starts again now in a little bit more detail. So in the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, the seventh day of the month. The same day where all the fountains will be broken up. So it starts uh, again um, after having mentioned that, the, the, that, that there were 40 days already, that the, you know, that, um, that, the, the, that the rains were on, on, the, on, the, on the earth for 40 days. It comes, goes back into um, sort of a rerun of, of that detail, but um, perhaps a little bit more detail in it. And then it goes on to say, and in self, self some day Noah entered, Noah and Shem and Ham and Joseph and all and, and the whole family get into the ark. So you can see it's a repeat. Yeah, yeah, they got into the ark already, and then they get into the ark again. So the story is not, um, when you, and this is not the only place you'll see it in the story. Um, you'll see it jumping around in, uh, getting into some detail. Bef uh, may maybe mentioning the end and then going back into some detail then going back into the end again and we see that uh, quite a bit in, in, in uh, chapter 8 where um, there's the whole story of the 40 days of, of which led up to the releasing of the dove and then it, it mentions about the, 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 the cover being removed you know so there's the covering of the ark being removed after the um, the doves are released. So when you read the sequentially, you you think, well, the doves are released, and then he moved the, the removed the cover from the ark, um, and then the, and 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 the ground was dry, and that leads to a tremendous amount of confusion. If you read it that way, you're not going to get uh, you you get into to trouble um, making uh, and it's getting uh, you get into trouble getting the 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 correct. Um, sequence of events in, in, in according to the, 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 the days that were given to us. Um, so that's the first thing I just want to get across to, to, to um, the listener of this video 
is that you cannot read chapter 7 and 8, the story of the flood, in a sequential uh, story order. you got to read into, you got to understand what the text was saying at the time and get into the understanding of the words, the actual words, because there's a few words where it refers to um, uh, and the earth was dry when the uh, when the, uh, the the English word is dry, but you discover that when you get into the Hebrew word, it was it was nothing to do with dry. Okay, so that l interpretation of some of these um, gets um, has created some confusion, and I, and I'm so I'm going to go into detail of that each one of those instances. I'm going to mention them as I go into through this um, through this timeline. Okay. So overall, I just want to give you an understanding of the colors. Um, okay, so we, we've got the, the months with each alternate color in a different month, okay, going through. Um, I've, I have base, I've included in this column the, the number of days in a month. Now in a biblical calendar, we've got a, a, a switching um, where a month has 29, then 30, 29, and 30, alternating um, in terms of days. Typically, the extra month that's added is 30 days. And um, and then continues again in the new year with a new sequence of 2930, 2930. So that's what's reflected there: the total or number of days in a particular month. Okay. Now, just out of interest, the question is: Should the first day have 29 or 30? Most times, if you, if when I've done the checks, it's 29. Uh, there are a few instances where it is 30, but in this instance, the numbers do not pan out if you start off with 30 there. Okay. Uh, um, so you can play around with these numbers yourself and you'll be able to see that that is the case so what we've got here is all I've done is I've broken up each month where there is given uh, some detail uh, we've had to break break it down into numbers so this column in that month month 2 those would add up to 30 Okay. Um, this one here would add up to that's for the month 3 those two numbers add up to 29 and then of course there's no detail there so those are all then this one here those two numbers there add up to 29 and so on and that is so that's the the analysis so I'm just giving a breakdown so that I can get into um, explaining when these events because some of these beginnings of the 40 days didn't necessarily occur at the beginning uh, very beginning or ending of a month um, they was uh, like in the case of the 40 days um, the 40 days started on the 17th day you've got to include the count of the 17th day of the second month so we know that if there was a warning uh, if there was a a, a, a warning um, of seven days the warning must have taken we're not given the 10th day of the second month but we know it must have occurred on the 10th day of the seventh month including so that's 10th day of this of the second month is the first day of the seven day warning so that the seven days could be complete by the 16th day of the second month so that the the 17th would be the first day of the flood okay so there has to be seven before uh, for there were yet seven days and there is a verse that uh, and I've not included it here on the chart uh, but there's another verse that said after seven days um, the, the 40 days and it might actually be uh, I don't know we might actually find it still but it's definitely after the seven days seven days complete and then the start of the 40 okay so we've got so in this month two we've got 14 days left if you take nine nine days up to the tenth day then starts the, the seventh seven days would be from the tenth day forward to the sixteenth day and if there's 30 days in the month there's 14 days left in that particular month okay then in the month three we know it's 40 days so there would be we would consume 26 days of of these 29 days to complete the 40 days so that's why we've got the 14 and 26, which gives us a total of 40 days. So by the 27th day of the third month, that's when the ark lifts off the ground. Now this is something now very important that many people miss. And um, so this is where we have to go to Genesis. 7, and the flood was 40 days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bare up the ark, and it was lift up above the earth. So what had happened the ark for the first 40 days the ark is sitting still on the ground hasn't moved one bit the waters are, are rising 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 it's raining it's raining the floodgates are open at the, the 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 windows of the heavens are open the um 
the, um, the, 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 fountains of, the fountains of the deep um, are, are, are burst open and the water is busy rising up and it takes 40 days uh, before the ark lifts off the ground. Okay, so that's so we, 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 we must take note. It's, then we're getting into the next period where we're told in uh, um, where the waters prevailed. Uh, which one is bare? Okay, so it's bared up. Um, uh, so the waters, this now the ark is lifted, but the the mountains are not yet covered. So the water continues going up and up. So this whole uh, yellow block is the 150 days um, of the water prevailing. Okay, now prevailing means um, to have strength. Um, so if we just have a look, prevailed, the waters prevailed. It's to be strong. It's to be great. To be mighty. Okay. So to be valiant, it's it's a, it's an indication of this. This was a there was a this was a rumbling. This was water coming out in full power. Okay, um, so 150 days of of of, of prevailing. Um, so the, where we're told in Genesis 7:24, we have covered it briefly. The waters prevailed upon the earth 150 days. Okay, so it's prevailed. Later on, we're told in Genesis 8:3, the waters returned from off the earth continuously, and after the end of 150 days, the waters were abated. So this is a whole different 150 days to to that for 150 days. Okay, of, so the yellow is the prevailing, and the green uh, block. Which and I'll get and I've separated into two portions in that 150 days. There is there's two things happening within those 150 days, and I'll get into that now. So this is the receding. This is when the waters start um, turning back, and it takes 150 days uh, for the waters to to get down to, to to ground level again. Not necessarily totally dried up yet, but completely abated. So it's returned to where the Lord had decided to bring it back to. It wasn't back to its original in other words the oceans uh, are, are are far greater after the flood than pre the flood there was more earth uh, dry earth before the flood than after the flood uh, so when 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 it got to a point and the lord decided that's where it's going to they're going to stop and the, then the receding stopped okay and uh, so just a little bit of of, of sideline thing that right so we've got, um, if we go into Genesis 7, 18 to 20, we'll find that the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth and the, and the ark went up upon the face of the water. So this is when the ark is now lifting and lifting and lifting. Okay, it's off the ground and it's lifting and it's lifting. Okay? And then it continues and the water prevailed exceedingly upon the earth and all the hills, uh, the hills that were um, under the whole heaven were covered. Okay, so now it's got to the point. It's re, it's got to the point where the mountains are all covered up, and then it continues to cover up by a degree of 15 cubits upward that the waters prevail. So it, once it got to the highest mountain, uh, it then continued to to cover by another 15 cubits, which is about seven and a half meters. It's about 25 feet. Um, so that it covered the highest mountain above the highest mountain. Okay, now the great debate is which one is it Mount Everest as it is today, which is the highest mountain, or was it some other mountain? Um, and did Everest, as some suggest, actually form during the time of the flood, during because of the pressure of the water, etc.? There's been some debate on that. Um, I, I, the scope of this uh, this video is really doesn't really allow for uh, getting too much into that. I, I personally don't believe that that was the case. Um, that the highest mountain that that the word is referring to was in fact Everest, um, and and that Everest wasn't created during the flood, but it was already in existence before the flood, um, and that is the highest mountain that it was that was covered by a, a space of 15 cubits. Nevertheless, what's more important to understand is this 15 cubits, and that's why I've highlighted it because it's later on it's evident why the Lord told us you see we have to understand that the Lord tells us things not because 
for, for no reason. There's a very specific reason. When he tells us there's 40 days and 150 days and 150 days and 40 days and 7 and 7, he tells us that for a very specific reason. We, we need to understand that's not, uh, he's very efficient with, the, with these scriptures, with his word. So there's a reason for this 115 cubits that's mentioned here, that the waters prevailed above the highest mountain. Okay, And, we, and I believe we will see the reason for that a little bit in, in a short while. Okay, so we, we, we've got a situation where the water is prevailing, prevailing, prevailing. And then we're told that um, in Genesis 8, 1, okay, now it comes a little bit later on in the, in the story. And this is where things get confusing because um, we're told in uh, 7, 24 that, the, that it prevailed for 150 days. And then later on in the story, we're told that God remember Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him on the earth, on the ark. And God made a wind pass over the earth, and the waters assuaged. Okay, and then the fountains of the deep and the and the windows of heaven were stopped, and the rain from heaven was restrained. Now something happened here. This was the stopping of the the inflush inflowing of water. Okay, this is what's happening here. The 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 those the fountains of the deep are closed. The heaven, the mount, windows are closed. The rain stops, and now we need to get understand. Hey, what's going on here? What is this? What is this uh, wind that passes over? And when you go into to a little bit uh, more depth and understanding, you'll find that this wind, sorry, that, that line should be there. <laughs> wind, this wind, this word translated wind is actually ruach. It is H7307, which is the same word translated spirit in Genesis 1 1 let's just go and have a look at that um, just go to Genesis 1 1 where um, and I'm going to switch now to K KJV plus um, the earth was without form and void darkness upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved so the spirit H7307 the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and that same word is translated wind yeah in um, in Genesis, in Genesis 8, 1, it's translated, made a wind. So I, I believe what we need to understand here is that this is the Spirit of God moving over the face of the waters. Not necessarily a wind as in the way we understand wind to be a storm wind. This is the Spirit moving over and saying, bringing about a, a calmness. Just like Jesus stilled the waters um, uh, with his disciples when they were in a storm and he commanded and the waters went still the same thing happened here God commanded by the power of his spirit that the waters must be still and we, evidence of that is in this word assuaged which means um, is is uh, it means to appease, to make, to seize, to pacify. Okay, so this is not causing, it. just now you've got a, a mad, raging waters, huge big waves, storms, probably it's chaotic, and then he stills it. Now in that stilling process, the effect is the water level drops as well. Not because it started receding not because it started going out of the out of the system so to say we, it, it, it just we've got a situation where the where the fountains of the deep are closed the heavens the the windows of heaven are closed but the water is not being taken out yet it's just being calmed down and that's what's happening here and then what happens and it's during this 150 days we don't know exactly when the waters were assuaged. We cannot say exactly when. But what we are told is that on the 17th day of the 7th month, that the ark rests, and, and the word is in, in, in King James is on Mount Ararat, but the word could also be over. In other words, this was not necessarily coming down and touching the ground and settling down. This is a settling down, a resting... Um, because uh, the word, in fact, I've got the the word here, um, Genesis four, 
and the ark rested in the seventh month on the seventh day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat. By the way, the mountain in Ararat is on its own, um, in, in the one in, in, in Turkey, and it's not, it's not surrounded by mountains. Um, it's um, there's another one that's a, another one of those things that makes us believe that the Ararat one in Turkey was named after the original Mount Ararat, which is in Himalayas in Tibet. And um, I believe that is where the real Ark laid, and probably is today, and it's been hidden, that the Ark is really in Tibet. And there's a, if you go and have a look on the internet, you'll find that there is a, there was a one time when I remembered a fair amount of information on the Ark in Tibet and, and people that had found evidence of the Ark in Tibet and all of that is gone. I can't find it anymore. So uh, I believe that is where the true Ark is, is in the mountain, in the Himalaya mountains um, at or very close to Mount Everest um, in Tibet. Anyway, what we've got here is the Ark coming to rest over um, or on um, and this is where that 15 cubits comes into play. When we go and look at the dimensions of the Ark, and this is where that other site um, that I referred to earlier, they went into a lot of detail on the size of the cubits and all those kind of things, but it's even you don't even need the conversions to, to understand this. We talk, we're told in uh, Genesis um, 6-5 that the the arc must be 300 cubits long and, and 50 cubits wide and 50 cubits high. That's the overall basic dimensions of the of the arc that Noah was given. Now when you go into, into some detail on shipping you will know that there's a section that's called the draft and that's the part that goes into the water. Okay, And then this the face board is the part that sticks out of the water. Okay, So, the, so there's a this, can, this ratio of face board to draft in other words, how much sticks out versus how much sticks above can vary from uh, from design to design of various ships. But for the most, for a very stable design, you want somewhere around halfway. You want half below and half below, half above. It does two things: one, it's a very stable uh, ship, and second, we, in big waves, you don't get uh, if you get situations where the 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 faceboard is very small by comparison to the draft. But it's very susceptible to waves easily rolling over the over the over the deck, um, as opposed to a cruise ship. Is the other way around. You've got this huge amount of 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 of, of ship above, uh, and uh, and only ten or fifteen percent of the ship is below the water, and um, so they. But they do that for reasons because they want their cabins above the water line, etc., etc. So there's different design constraints, but. Um, when we we need to consider stability, and this was the, the criteria for this uh, for the for Noah's Ark, was stability and to be able to, to get through this time of turmoil uh, in the waters. Um, it is most likely that it was about a 50-50 ratio. So about 50 about 15 cubits would have been below the water, and 15 cubits would, would have been above. So when you consider that, and you know that the water was 15 cubits above the highest peak that means when the water started to settle the arc probably just 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 touched the ground with 15 with its 15 cubits being below the water it just touched not to the point where it would break the ship but just enough to hold it steady and i think that's what actually happened here when the waters calmed gone uh, brought that arc over the hi highest peak and it just just touched uh, uh, the ground to to, and that's what we we're reading here. I think that's, um, and that's the reason why we are told that the water was just 15 cubits above the highest peak, and um, and we're given the dimensions of the arc. I think we can it may be reading a little bit between the lines, but I don't think it's a far stretch. Um, because the reason why is when we if we in this 150 days. If it's not started receding yet, why else would the ark um, come to some sort of rest? You know, uh, why else? What other 
mechanism would there be? Uh, the water's not actually started uh, uh, receding because we're told that it, it prevailed uh, for 150 days and it abated for 150 and the abating hasn't started yet. So by the 17th day of the seventh month, if, if this understanding is correct, the abating would not have started yet. Um, so, um, and in fact, I think I haven't actually, if I remember correctly, I think even if you combine the 40 with the 50, you would still, the 50 would, the, the, the abating had, still wouldn't have started, I think, by a few days uh, before the 17th of the seventh month. Um, if I remember correctly, yeah, it was 149. Um, Yeah, it's 149 from 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 there. So it's one. So the 17th of the seventh month is one day before 150 is complete. Uh, before the in, in if you combine the 40 into the into the 150, then you've got a situation where the arc rests one day before the abating actually starts. Um, so that that leads a bit of a problem so there's even even in even if you consider the 40 to be part of the 150 you've got a bit of a problem as to why the ark would come to rest i believe the reason is is because of the waters assuaged they settle down they calm down okay the waves were gone and and the whole thing came to rest and um and the ark came to rest so to say stillness just 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 touching the the ground but not enough to to break it up by the 17th day of the seventh month and the calmness continues on to complete the 150 days. Okay. So then only after the 150 days, we're told that the um, now that's the end of the prevailing. Okay, then the beginning of the abating. Alright. We're told later in 8.3 that the waters return from the earth continuously and after the end of 150 days the waters were abated. So that's the abating lasts a total of 150 days. We never, this is the interesting thing, and we never told exactly at what point the the uh, fountains on the deep or that the water started w was removed. Okay, we're just told that it abated for 150 days. So the only thing we can do is immediately after the 150 days is complete is to begin. The, the abating period, the 150 days abating. So, just going into the numbers again, in, in terms of the the counts, uh, we can derive a date because of the, the 150. If we know that the 40 came to an end on the 26th day, so on the 27th day, it lifted off the ground, and and then we can we know that there's of the 26 of the 29, there's three days remaining in the third month. Then of course the 430, the 29, the 30, and then we've got the 17 days to the resting of the arc, uh, and then of the 17 of the 29. Then we've got 12 remaining of that 29 plus another 29, and when you add all of these numbers together, it comes to exactly 50. And the interesting thing is, it ended up being exactly complete at the end of the no sorry one day before the end so of, of the eighth month so the abating started on the first day of the eighth month we're not told that as a date in the scriptures but by by understanding of the 150 following the 40 etc it could only have started abating on the first day of the eighth month okay and then it starts abating in the meantime. Then by, we are told that on the first day of the tenth month, so from the first day of the eighth month to the first day of the tenth month, that's exactly two months. Then the mountain tops were seen, and we're told that in Genesis um, eight five. So Genesis eight five, and the waters decreased continuously until the tenth month. And in the tenth month, the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains were seen. Um, so of course, there's a limit in terms of distance that you can see. Uh, before your eye cannot see beyond the horizon and you can't see mountains so if they were in a certain position and they started seeing mountains uh, mountain tops 
that means that there must have been other mountains with invisible distance. And the interesting thing, the observation is when you go to Mount Ararat in Turkey, there's no that that was that is not the situation. These guys, uh, these guys go into a lot of detail on that. That's why I mentioned. Uh, let me just go back there. These guys go into a lot of detail on that on that whole concept. Um, so have a look at that. Um, okay, so we've got this abating and um, and then from this point on now so up until yeah there's no land visible for two months after the of abating there's no land visible then after two months of abating um, a total of uh, 30 days because we yeah 30 days because the first day of the 10th month uh, sorry is, uh, sorry is it I said two months, it's not two months abating. No, no, it is. It's the eighth month. It's the first of the eighth month plus plus the the ninth month. Yeah. So it's the let me just is that right? No, I'm sorry, I'm getting myself into a knot here. There's twenty nine of the it's the last day of the eighth month, not the first day of the eighth month. The the twenty nine of the 29 first 29 of the eighth of the eighth month is 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 ascribed to the 150 days from the the last day the 30th day of the eighth month from the 30th day of the eighth month forward is the abating so it's about a month in in other words 30 days before the mountain tops are seen on the first day of the 10th month so there's 30 days, one about a month, one one the whole of the ninth month plus that day, total of 30 days of abating. Okay, sorry, my error in 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 the split there. Okay, so then we have continued. Now our land is visible for the remaining uh, 120 days. So the remaining 120 days of the 150, land becomes more and more visible as as the as it continues to abate. Um, again, that's just a, a arithmetic. So just adding up the one day, that then the, each total number of days for there, plus the first day of the first month. That one day we told first day of the first month in Genesis eight thirteen, uh, Genesis eight thirteen, and it came to pass in the six hundredth year, six hundredth first year, um, in the first month on the first day of the month that the waters were dried up that word is not dried up really but it's translated dried up from the earth and Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked and and behold the face of the earth was dry and that word is not actually doesn't mean dry when you go to the original word so what we're seeing here is that I'm going to go into that so what we're seeing is that by the first day of the first month we've got a situation where the water is gone but the 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 earth is not dried up yet it's just a wasteland. When you go and look into the, re the original word that was translated dried up here is H2717. Okay. And it means to make waste. It, it, it does mean to, you know, so it's, it's got a, it's to, to parch drought that is, um, it's, it's a desolate, to destroy, to, it's decay. Okay. Uh, it's desolate. It's to make waste. Okay. I'm going to just bear with me here. And it's used twice okay so the waters was made waste and the war and the face of the earth was dry it's not dry it was a wasteland it was a decayed situation you've got a picture in your mind the, it's the ark is what all they see about them is no more water and they just see everything that was on the ground is now rotten all those trees and um, and that that were under the water for a year uh, are all dead and they're rotting okay it's just a waste marsh mush okay that's what's being depicted here there was no dryness it was like a would have been like a marshy type situation the reason why we know that is later on we are told that in the second month this is the the first day of the first month and in the second month on the 27th day the earth was dried and there we have a different word for dried it's h3001 which means to make dry. This is the real uh, dry. Okay, and very interesting when you do a search on this word. If you go to Job fourteen eleven, both of these words 
H2717 and H3110 are used in the same sentence and it says the waters and it was referring to uh, the, it's not in context of the flood but it, uh, I'm just pointing out the, the understanding of the words the waters fail from the sea uh, and the flood decayeth and dryeth up there's the decayeth you see the word H2717 is associated with the word decayed rottenness um, and and then we've got H3001 which is dry so the two words are two different uh, con uh, contexts two different uh, pictures the one is a situation okay the water is gone it's no longer a sea anymore but it's still a marshland it's it's not dry it's a waste it's a wasteland it's a decaying situation okay and then it takes from the first it takes from the first of the first month till the 27th of the second month before it's actually dry okay 22nd of the second month the 20 until uh, the, the, uh, the second month the 20 27th day of the second month the earth is dry so from those and 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 when you read it in context of all the other events it kind of makes sense because we've got the water abated no it doesn't step out of the ark he just removes the covering okay on the first day of the first month he takes the cover off okay does nothing else and he waits 40 days he doesn't get out of the ark he doesn't send anything out he doesn't send the raven out he waits 40 days okay and then we're told after 40 days at so that we have to go to the story where of all the doves and that that are going out so genesis 8 6 and it came to pass at the end of 40 days this is the second not that 40 days there this is the, another 40 the end of 40 days that noah opened the window of the ark which he had made okay so he opens up the window after 40 days and he on that same day there's no waiting there now it's 40 days and he sends forth the raven which went to and fro and until the waters were dried up off the face of it. So, in other words, this raven goes to the ark and back, and to the ark and back, and comes back and forth, and um, and and and, uh, and, uh, and it never really comes to an end. It doesn't give us the end story of the of the of the, of the raven, but at the same time, and also it's uh, at the same time sending the raven, and also he sends forth a dove, okay, and the dove can't find uh, a foot to place, and it comes back, and she returned unto him. And he and he pulls her into the ark. Okay, so that's after 40 days. He sends the raven, and he sends the dove, and the dove comes back. Okay, so then he waits. Then he then he stayed yet another. Now it's not yet another. In other words, there wasn't a previous seven days. That word other is incorrect. It should be just he stayed waited seven days, and again he said for it. He set forth the dove so he waited seven days and he sends the dove again after seven days and this time she comes back with the olive leaf in, uh, uh, plucked up okay so now he knows that the waters uh, things are with uh, after the within this 47 days um, there's now an olive leaf that actually is, so some of the trees have started to recover and they're starting to put out their leaves and and um, and the and the dove brings back so he knows that the situation is getting very close to the point where they can step out and he waits yet another seven days so that's uh, and he sends out uh, so yet another seven days and he sets forth an, uh, the dove again and this time she doesn't return to him okay so uh, that's after yet another seven. so there's only two sets of seven days 40 days sends out a dove wait seven days sends out a dove wait seven days sends out a dove and she doesn't return and that's it and then we're told on the 27th day that he is that the lord says he can step out so in other words he, after the seven days of the this the dove not having returned so the dove doesn't return f and um that and the dove, he knows that the that, that the waters have abated and he and he um and the lord says to him um so in the second month of the uh, on the 27th day of the month the earth was dried okay the real dried and and then and god spoke unto Noah, saying go forth up from the ark thou and thy wife and thy sons and thy sons wives with thee so he's told to leave the ark on the 27th day of the second month and that would be, would have been after 
394 days. In other words, on the 395th day, if you want to call it that. I've not included that 394. So that's where I believe that is the true understanding is that the total duration was 394, which was a, a long year, a biblical long year of 384 days, plus the 10 days um, going bring us from the 17th of the second uh, month to the 27th of the same month in the year after the after the flood started. So, um, and that's. Uh, that is a situation where the 40, the, the 40, the 150, the 150, the 40, the 77 are all sequentially added up and it gives us exactly a total of 394 days. Now just another interesting thing, if you take from the seven, the beginning of the 7 day warning, so from that 10th day, if you take from the warning and you include the warning and a few other things, uh, let me, uh, I need to just mention here, we know, we're told that after uh, they leave the ark on the 27th, the 27th, 27th of the second month, that Noah builds an altar and God enters into a covenant with Noah not to, and, and the rainbow is given as a sign. Um, we're not told exactly when that happened. Um, we're not told how long after they stepped out of the ark did that happen. We know it obviously would have been fairly soon. Um, I've come to understand that the 15th day of the third month is what I believe to be covenant day it is evidence that all the main covenants that the Lord entered into uh, those with with Abraham and and others Jacob and there were other covenants that he entered into occurred on the 15th day of the third month I also believe it is the very day that Jesus was born on the 15th day of the third month which if you count correctly from from Passover would be the true feast of weeks uh, the Leviticus count of seven weeks uh, and uh, being f um, uh, f 49 days and then the 50th day is would be Feast of Weeks so that is not too far away it's only um, 18 or 19 days from when they were told to step out of the ark so I think that's a fairly reasonable amount of time to, to get together to find their feet uh, and and to to build an altar and I believe that this is probably the day that the covenant occurred if that is the case okay and that is my interpretation on that my interjection there okay there's no scriptural evidence for that but if that is the case then the total time from the time from the beginning of the warning to the covenant would have been exactly 420 days so that's just a little bit of extra interesting observation if you really want to look at it from that perspective okay all right so i think that's that's i hope that um was was clear and and uh, um i hope this uh, blesses you um i think that pretty much covers everything that i wanted to cover on, on the subject please um you know get into it yourself and have a look at it uh, uh critically don't accept what what others have just uh, said. Get into the the scriptures. Look at the look at the the original meanings um, of the words, and and if you do that, I'm sure you'll find to, you'll come to a conclusion as I have that the the standard version that the church that most uh, of the church teaches with regards to the 370 just doesn't does just doesn't work. Um, and they are required to to bend things and to to leave things out um, in order to make it work so with that god bless you